We will give the floor now for the presentation to the Deputy Chairman of the Board of Directors, Chairman of the Management Board of Gazprom, Alexei Miller. Please. Dear shareholders, the general shareholders meeting was preliminarily given the respective materials governing the operations of uh, public insurance company Gazprom for 2017, which is the annual report, the accounting financial report, the uh, audit commission and revision commission re review, and other materials. So we propose for the shareholders meeting to approve the annual report by Gazprom for 2017, the annual accounting and financial report by Gazprom for 2017, the distribution of uh, profit, as well as uh, the size, time frame, and the form of the payment of dividends proposed by the Board of Directors going the results of 2017. We're also submitting to the decision of the meeting the approval of the auditors uh, on payment to the members of the Board of uh, Directors, the compensation and the members of the Audit Commission of the company compensation on the election of the members of the Board and the company's uh, Audit Commission. We also propose to uh, further amend the statute governing the shareholders agreement and uh, on how to equip uh, the respective premises around that would be intended for the broadcasting of our proceedings and so various decisions pertaining to these items are in the ballot while the additional information was made available in the handouts made available to you preliminarily. Dear shareholders, Gazprom is successfully implementing the strategy of leadership amongst the global energy companies. The Gazprom Group is a global leader in terms of the reserves of the natural gas, the volume of its production, and its supplies to the international market. The single gas supply systems which uh, Gazprom operates and develops is something that cannot be touched by anyone in terms of its scale and the level of its state-of-the-art technological development. We have created the biggest in Russia electricity holding, which became the lead in terms of the installed capacities and the first in terms of the production of electricity amongst the Russian companies of heat generation. We took our oil division, which is Gazprom Neft Company, into the top three leaders of the oil industry of the company, acting as the pioneer of the development of the Russian Arctic offshore, providing for a year-round shipment of oil along the Northern Sea route. Gazprom makes tangible contribution to the development of the Russian economy. The added value of uh, the that Gazprom in 2017 has generated was 3.4 trillion rubles, or almost 4% from the national Russian GDP. Gazprom is one of the key taxpayers in Russia. Into different level budgets, government budgets in 2017 reached 2.5 trillion rubles. More than 60% account for the mineral extraction tax and various custom payments. Gazprom accounts for almost 8% of the revenue into the Russian Federation consolidated budget. Compared to the previous years, payments grew by 568 billion rubles. While executing large-scale strategic uh, project, Gazprom maintains a very strong financial standing. The revenue from the sale by Gazprom Group has been growing in a stable way. In 2017, it grew by 7%, reaching 6 trillion 546 billion rubles. Gazprom has firmly taken up the place within the top five global gas companies in terms of the key financial performance indicators, the net profit and EBITDA. Considering the results of 2017, these were 12 and 25 billion U.S. dollars, respectively. In 2017, we have fully funded our capital investment out of the operational cash flow. Without taking into account changes in the bank deposits, the free cash flow of Gazprom was 24 billion rubles.
Gazprom has successfully been raising capital from the international financial markets. A weighted approach to selecting sources of finance provides the company with a low cost of raising debt funding, an average at the, about 5.6%. The key performance indicator in terms of the debt burden, which is the net debt to EBITDA ratio based on the results of 2017, was 1.4%. A high level of credit worthiness of Gazprom is confirmed by valuations by the leading international rating agencies. The company is passing through the peak of its investment program, program undertaking a whole series of large-scale prospective strategic projects, while at the same time taking into account the interests of its shareholders. The board of directors made a decision not to reduce the achieved level of dividend payment. So, based on the results of 2017, it is proposed to pay the dividend in the amount of 8 rubles 4 kopecks per one share. And so the total amount of dividends would be 190 billion rubles or 27% from net profit which are attributed to Gazprom shareholders. As to the size of dividends, Gazprom is the leader amongst the oil and gas companies in Russia. Dear shareholders, the ambitious projects run by Gazprom to develop production, transportation and hydrocarbon processing incentivize and stimulate innovations in the oil and gas industry and are conducive to the development of Russian science and uh, research and development. So in 2017, in terms of R&D and investment research, we spent 2.8 billion rubles. Gazprom is taking up the leading positions in the Russian fuel and energy industry in the area of import substitution. In 2017, we signed and validated 17 agreements of purpose-specific cooperation with the manufacturers of import substituting products, the share of domestic material and resources in Gazprom's procurement through 2017 amounted to 99 and 4 percent while in terms of pipes and various connections, 100%. For its facilities, Gazprom is buying products of this category from Russian producers only. Gazprom has made a significant contribution into the development of the Russian pipe manufacturing industry in many ways. Thanks to the Gazprom's orders, the manufacturing capacity of the Russian pipe producers from 2014 up till now grew from 9 million tons to up to more than 23 million tons a year. The share of high-tech products in the industry exceeds 60%. While performing Gazprom's orders, the Russian pipe manufacturers have reached the topmost quality level of their products, which enables them to compete in any segment of the global market. In the course of 25 years, Gazprom has successfully been, been multiplying the resource base of the Russian gas industry. Since 1993, more than 80 fields have been discovered, and the gas reserve growth under Gazprom through the exploration effort throughout this period was 10.5 trillion cubic meters of gas. In 2017, based on the results of the exploration program, Gazprom's reserves in the Russian territory were grown by 852.9 billion cubic meters, which is 96% of the total Russian incremental reserve growth. So the reserve growth in liquid hydrocarbons was almost 100 million tons. So today, Gazprom is the world leader in terms of the proven hydrocarbon reserves. The reserves of this company are 1.5 times are more than the total reserves of the five biggest public oil and gas companies in the world, such as ExxonMobil, PetroChina, BP, Shell and Chevron. Since 2005, we have invariably been maintaining our reserve replacement ratio in natural gas at the level above 1. In 2017, it was 1.82. The reserve replacement ratio in the liquid hydrocarbons area, 1.64. 
2017, the production of gas by Gazprom Group companies grew compared to 2016 by 52 billion cubic meters, or by 12.4 percent, amounting to 471 billion cubic meters of natural gas. Within a very short historic period of time, through the efforts undertaken by Gazprom's team in the Russian territory, the biggest in the world gas production complex was created. Its capacities exceed 550 billion cubic meters of gas a year. There are new gas production centers and hubs are being set up in the Far East and in the eastern Siberia of the country. In the Arctic area, we are developing the Yamal gas production hub. The Yamal gas is the resource base for the expansion of the North Gas Transportation Corridor, which is is the most important route to supply blue fuel to the Russian market and the European countries. In 2017, we celebrated five years since the commissioning into operation of the Bovanenko field, which bears a key significance for the development of the Yamal Peninsula resources. The production from that field, we have been growing every year. In 2017, the incremental growth was 15.3 billion cubic. Meters. The peak production reached 264 million cubic meters a day. In 2017, the Bovanenkova field produced 17.6% from the total volume of the Gazprom's group production. An intensive uh, uh, development is undergoing the Chinda field, which is the leading field in the Yakutia production hub. The gas from that field will go into the Power of Siberia pipeline and further to the exports already next year. The Victor field, which in terms of the size of its reserves is in the unique category. Gazprom is developing the Irkutsk gas production hub. The field is currently being prepared for commercial development. The Sakhalin production hub is where we are developing unique methods of uh, underwater development. And in order to maintain high levels of production from the Nadim Portaz region, we are further improving the Sinod and Archimov formations production applying the state-of-the-art technologies of the multi-stage hydrofracking. The production of liquid hydrocarbons by Gazprom Group, based on the results of 2017, grew almost by 2 million tons compared to 2016, amounting to 56.9 million tons. The production of oil was grown up to 41 million tons. As to the total amount of uh, hydrocarbon production, Production, gas, gas condensate and oil, Gazprom is the world leader taking over PetroChina and ExxonMobil in 2.6 times, Shell 2.8 times and BP almost three times. Gazprom in the oil industry is worthily represented by our subsidiary, which is Gazprom Neft Company. The company is demonstrating high efficiency, excellent operational and financial performance, developing innovative methods for the development of hydrocarbons. In 2017, Gazprom Neft has further strengthened its positions in the Russian oil industry and for the first time entered into the top three leaders in the Liquid, liquid hydrocarbon production and taking into account the joint ventures and operations based on the results of 2017, Gazprom Neft's production was 62.4 million tons. The oil pouring terminal, the Vorkuta in Arctic, ensured the year-round exports of the shipment of the oil produced, and today we are raising the flag along the mast of the new icebreaker, which will be taking the shipment of oil through the Arctic ice, and that is another step to develop the Russian icebreaking fleet and covering the interests of Russia along the Northern Sea Rus. So this unique Gazprom's experience is also being applied abroad. Gazprom Group is participating in the overseas hydrocarbon production projects, the biggest of which is being successfully 
run in Vietnam, Bolivia and in Iraq, dear shareholders. Gazprom accounts for 50% of the total volume of the gas processing in Russia. The maximum extraction of the valuable components from the resources produced and the production of the high added value products is the top priority objective for Gazprom Group in the area of hydrocarbon processing and refining. So the future of the gas processing in terms of its development will relate to the construction of the biggest in Russia, Amur gas processing plant, which in terms of its capacities will be the second biggest in the world. One of the Gazprom's achievements over the past 25 years is an impeccable work done by the single gas supply system in the country. Its basis is the biggest gas transportation system in the world, which became the raw example of efficiency and the top-level quality of managing the gas infrastructure system. Gazprom also acts as the owner and operator of the gas transportation systems in Armenia, Belarus and Kyrgyzstan. The development of the gas transportation system in Gazprom is being done in two ways. In the European part in Russia, we are expanding the northern gas transportation corridor. Its extension beyond Russian borders is the trans-border pipeline such as North Stream and the future North Stream 2. We built the state-of-the-art gas pipelines with a working pressure of 120 atmosphere, which is the Bovanenkova to Uhta, Bovanenkova Uhta 2, as well as Uhta to Torjo. In 2017, we built compressor capacities along the Bovanenkova Uhta 2 pipeline. This year, we will commission to operation the capacities, which will be worth 371 megawatt. In 2017, we shall complete the construction of the linear part of the Uhta Torjo 2 pipeline. In the east of the country, in full swing, we are nearing the completion of the construction of the Power of Siberia pipeline, which has become the biggest investment project in the global gas industry. Along with the development of the Gazprom's uh, gas transportation system, we are developing the capacities of the underground storage compared to the seasons of 1993-94. The potential maximum daily production of the underground Gazprom storages was grown by 2.6 times. In 2017, we achieved the historic record of a potential daily output of these underground storages for the takeoff uh, storage season, which is 85.3 million cubic meters. The operational reserve of our storage has been grown almost twice, and by the heating season of 2017 to 2018, we have provided for a record volume of the operational reserve gas in the underground storage, which was 72.18 billion cubic meters of gas. Compared to the seasons of 2015-16, the taking off of the underground storage gas in Russia during the past winter grew by 1.6 times. In 2017, Gazprom grew its gas supplies to the consumers in the Russian Federation up to 229.9 billion cubic meters, which was by 7% higher than the level of 2016. Gazprom is the biggest supply of natural gas in the Russian domestic market, whereby the main buyers from the Gazprom group are household, utility industry and electricity generators. Gazprom Group delivers the significant amount of its gas which is being consumed in the former Soviet Union countries. In 2017, we've sold within this category by 1.8 billion cubic meters of gas more than in the previous year. The amount of our supplies was 35 billion cubic meters of gas. This growing volume of the supplies of the natural gas into the former Soviet Union countries during 2017 became the results of the growing level of consumption and the taking off of gas in Belarus and the Baltic countries, as well as the restarting of uh, gas supplies to Azerbaijan. Gazprom undertakes large-scale work in order for every year tens of thousands of the Russian households would be in a position to receive natural gas. The program of the gasification of Russia is a priority, socially important project run by Gazprom. In 2017, we have completed the construction of 121 
local gas pipelines with the overall length of 1,878 kilometers. And thanks to that, within the 32 Russian regions, we have uh, provided for the delivery of gas to 207 townships and settlements, which created the conditions for the gasification of almost 52,000 households and 173 boiler facilities with a total amount of consumption 400 million cubic meters of gas a year. Towards the end of 2017, the level of the gasification in Russia reached 68.1%, including in the cities 71.4%, in the rural area 58.7%. The expansion of the utilization of gas as motor fuel is one of the future developments that Gazprom will be pursuing. In 2017, the total capacity of uh, the gas, uh, I guess, the motor fueling facilities were 2 billion cubic meters. The amount of sales from our um, uh, gas uh, fueling stations was raised to 525.9 million cubic meters of natural gas. By way of uh, motor fuels, in terms of the trucking vehicles, Gazprom also introduces the liquefied natural gas, whereby there is a pilot project currently being worked to build the network of the gas fueling stations in between Moscow and St. Petersburg, because this particular section is part of the transportation corridor between China and Europe. Dear shareholders, in 2017, we celebrated 10 years of the Gazprom's work in the electricity sector. We have reviewed the results of the implementation of the Gazprom strategy within this industry. And over the past 10 years, we have developed the biggest in the country electricity holding for heating generation. It's installed electric energy capacity, about one-sixth of the capacity of the single electric energy system of Russia. And towards the end of 2017, the capacities of the holding were 38.8 gigawatt. Gazprom has performed over more than 30 projects for the upgrading of the generating facilities with total capacity of 8.6 gigawatt. During the 10 years, the revenue in the electricity sector grew by more than three times. EBITDA grew by more than 7.5 times. The debt to EBITDA ratio went down from 2.5 to 1.1. And in 2017, Gazprom Energa Holding demonstrated a record financial performance thanks to the commissioning into operation of new effective capacities and optimizing its operational expenses. Amongst the key Key tasks of the strategy of Gazprom and Energy Holding for the period in between 2018 to 2027 is uh, improving internal efficiency and participating in the new upgrading and modernization program. As part of its international development, we are building heating electricity station in Serbia, considering the possibility to install gas generation capacities in Vietnam and China. Dear shareholders, in 2017, our supplies of natural gas into European countries, which is the further abroad, reached an historic record level, 194.4 billion cubic meters. Alexei Borisovich, it seems to me that all the present here do deserve to extend our gratitude for such a big work done. So let us just be, give a round of applause to you. Yes, sir. Thank you. For the 25 years, we have practically doubled our deliveries to this market. The share of Gazprom in the European consumption in 2017 has similarly grown up to a record level, which was 34.2 percent. In Europe, the Russian gas is growing in terms of the demand for it, for the record import into Germany in 2017 grew by additional 7% into Turkey by almost 17%. In 2017, Gazprom set an historic record in terms of the exports volume into Austria, 9.1 billion cubic meters of gas, which is 1.5 times more than 2016. 
during the heating season in 2017 to 2018, during very severe colds in Europe, Gazprom has achieved 10 records of daily deliveries into the far abroad. In March 2017, we set an absolute record of 713.4 million cubic meters of gas a day. The consumption of gas by European countries during 2017, based on preliminary estimations, was 568.2 billion cubic meters, which is by 26.5 billion cubic meters, or 4.9 percent more than what it was in 2016. The biggest uh, factors behind the growing demand were a high economic uh, activity in European countries and the long-term trend for the reduction of European indigenous production, which has evolved during the past few years. The resource base in the European gas industry is shrinking in Holland. The limits of uh, production are going down from the biggest Groningen field. The Norwegian authorities are limiting the offshore drilling in the high latitudes, so there are all the prerequisites for the further growth of the imports of gas into Europe. Overall, the import supplies of gas to the further broad countries during 2017 grew compared to 2016 by 22.8 billion cubic meters. The biggest contribution into this growth came from Gazprom. The incremental growth of Gazprom supplies over the period has been 15.1 billion cubic meters. The development of the global LNG production doesn't lead to any radical changes in the European gas balance. The supplies of LNG from the United States are being deterred by high cost of the full cycle of production and transportation over the ocean. In 2017, just uh, less than 2 million tons were shipped to the European buyers, primarily the ones who are not receiving gas from Russia. The share of American LNG in the European consumption was just a mere half. A percent. The first results of 2017 demonstrated that the Gazprom supply growth into European countries and the further abroad continued. Based on preliminary data over the first half year in 2017, we've uh, supplied to this market 101.2 billion cubic meters of gas, which is 5.7 percent more, or 5.5 billion cubic meters of gas more than the similar period demonstrated, which was the record 2007. So with the trends keeping up in terms of our supplies into the further broad based on the results of 2017, we may set a new historic record of about 200 billion cubic meters. The North Stream is uh, covering our supplies into the European markets along a very safe and reliable route. The transportic route has proven its reliability, its safety and security and efficiency by way of the route which connected Europe with the gas fields in Russia. In November 2017, along the North Stream pipeline from Russia into Germany First, since the commission of this project into operation we have supplied the 200 billionth cubic meter of gas. So based on the success of the North Stream, Gazprom is currently running the North Stream 2 project. In 2017 we signed an agreement on funding it with uh, ING, OMV, Shell, Juniper and Wintershall companies. So the new gas pipeline will be built by the end of 2019. So with its conditioning into operation, the throughput capacity of the foreign part of the North Transportation Corridor will grow up to 210 billion cubic meters of gas a year. We've already received full set of permits for the construction and operation of the planned pipeline in Germany, Finland Finland and Sweden. The route along the north uh, stream corridor from Yamal to Kreisfeld, almost 2,000 kilometers shorter than through the central corridor through Ukraine. So the new pipeline of the northern corridors are different from the Ukrainian ones in terms of the less uh, metal intensity, with less energy intensity, and with a much smaller carbon footprint. In February 2017, we celebrated 15 years since the commissioning into operation of the Blue Stream pipeline, which 
accounts for about 50% of the Russian gas exports towards the Turkish market. Throughout this period, along this gas pipeline, we provide transportation for more than 155 billion cubic meters of gas. Based on the results of 2017, along this gas pipeline, we have shipped the record amount of gas, which was 15.9 billion cubic meters. The supplies of gas through the Blue Stream pipeline became a very powerful catalyst for the development of the gas market in Turkey. Currently, Gazprom is building a new trans-Black Sea pipeline, which is the Turkish Stream. We have completed the first section of the pipeline for the first time in the world. The 210 millimeter pipe was laid down to the depth of 2,200 meters. The Turkish Stream will further increase the reliability of the gas supplies to our Turkish and European partners. The growing demand for gas in Europe requires guarantees of stability of supplies. So providing for their reliability comes from the underground storages that Gazprom operates abroad. We're doing our best in order for their active volume to be at least 5% from the annual amount of exports. During the past 10 years, it has grown almost three times. The geography of Gazprom's participation in the overseas underground storage projects is continuously expanding both in Europe and outside of it. At this point in time, we are undertaking the feasibility study of the possibility of Gazprom's group participation in the new underground storage project in the territories of Austria, Slovakia, China and other countries. For the purpose of expanding our customer base and raising the flexibility of our supplies overseas, Gazprom is developing its activities in the overseas and in the international LNG market. In 2017, the LNG from the Gazprom's portfolio went to nine countries. The Over 80% of our commercial operations was in the Asia-Pacific countries, amongst them India, one of the most dynamically developing Asian markets. In 2017, we shipped LNG to a new market to us, which was Spain, which so far is not reachable by our pipeline gas. So, developing our own capacities for the production of LNG together with Shell, we are now in preparation for the construction of the third train of the Sakhalin 2 terminal. Apart from that, we are undertaking a joint feasibility study to define the basic technology for the Baltic LNG terminal with overall capacity of 10 million tons a year. The most dynamic dynamically developing gas market in the world is China. The demand for gas in China is growing at a very high pace. In 2015, its consumption grew by 5%. In 2016, by 7%. And in 2017, already by 15%. The share of gas in the fuel mix in China will grow from the current 7% to 10 in 2020 and up to 15% by 2030, which means that already in a couple of years China will need up to 360 billion cubic meters of gas. So the local production is not covering such needs, and so China is growing its import supplies. Today it covers almost 40% of the domestic demand for gas. The potential capacity of the Chinese market is so huge that uh, within the midterm outlook it may require up to 110 billion cubic meters a year of the pipeline gas from Russia. So the power of Siberia pipeline will be launched into operation in December next year, and the Russian gas will start flowing into China. So in the course of 30 years, we shall supply into China more than 1 trillion cubic meters of gas. The Russian gas will help China's market to reach a balanced position to improve its liquidity and to shorten and completely eliminate the shortages that we remember taking place in 2017. In 2017, we put the foundations to start building another route of uh, pipeline supplies into China between Gazprom and CNPC. An agreement was signed according to which additional volumes of gas will come into China from the far east of Russia. The partnership between Gazprom and Chinese companies is not limiting itself to gas supplies. We are looking into the issues of cooperating in the area of underground gas storage as well as the gas generation of electricity in the territory of China, the gas motor fuel supplies, and also in the social area. 
Australia. Dear shareholders, we will further be following our mission to re reliably and consistently provide the Russian and foreign consumers with energy resources and what is particularly important during the periods of winter peak consumption. This is our topmost priority. Thank you for your attention.